Melting point is the temperature at which the solid and liquid phases are in equilibrium for a particular pure compound. There are two main reasons for determining the melting point of a substance. The first reason is to determine purity. Pure compounds have an accurate and narrow melting range. Impure samples, however, are detected by a broad melting range that is lower than the literature value. The second reason is to identify unknowns. Pure compounds can be identified by comparing their melting point to the literature values. There are two main instruments that can be used to determine melting point. The first one is the Fisher-Johns apparatus, or the hot stage melting point instrument, covered in the first half of the video, and the melt temp apparatus, covered in the second half. Please note, all melting points should be recorded as a range of temperatures. The first value is the temperature at which a crystal or solid begins to melt or gloss over, while the second value is the temperature at which a crystal or solid is completely liquid. Never record one number. This is the Fisher-Johns melting point apparatus. It contains a hot stage where you sandwich your sample together between two thin glass plates and place it in the holder. This is where we will see the sample melt. It also contains a stage light and an eyepiece for observing the sample. The voltage control regulates the rate of heating, not the temperature. The thermometer notes the temperature of the hot stage. And finally, there is an on-off switch. Carefully place a round glass cover slide into the well of the hot stage. Place a few crystals on the glass. If too much sample is placed on the glass, it will take longer to melt and artificially increase the melting range, making it inaccurate. Once you have placed an appropriate amount of sample on the first glass cover slide, place a second one on top to sandwich the crystals. If you know the identity of your compound that you are testing, be sure to look up its literature melting point value prior to the experiment in order to confirm the accuracy of your observed value. Turn the instrument and thermometer on. Now we can turn the voltage to 40 in order to get within 20 degrees of the suspected melting point. Do not turn the voltage too high. If the temperature increases too quickly, inaccurate results will be obtained. Nearing your melting point, be sure that the temperature is not rising by more than 2 degrees per minute. If it is rising too quickly, turn the voltage down to 25 to 30. Be patient for your first crystal to melt, as it's the only way to get an accurate reading. The melting range begins when the first crystal begins to melt and ends when the final crystal is a liquid. Once you've noted the melting range, carefully remove the slides from the hot stage with a spatula and dispose of the plates in the used plates container. Don't forget to turn the instrument and the thermometer off. Be courteous and place the metal cooling rod on the hot stage to cool it down for the next person. With this technique, melting points are obtained in thin, closed, and capillary tubes. This is the melt temp apparatus we will be using. There's a thermometer, an eyepiece, the light source, voltage control, and finally the on-off switch. Again, the voltage control regulates the rate of heating, not the temperature. Place a small amount of sample on a wash glass. If the sample is not already crushed, do so with a glass rod or spatula until it is a fine powder. Next, tap the opened end of the tube into the sample, filling it about 1 to 2 millimeters. Carefully turn the tube over and remove any solid adhered to the outside. To compact and move the sample to the closed end of the capillary, carefully tap the tube on the bench top. You may also drop the capillary with the sample side down into a larger glass tube to compress the solid quickly. The final amount of sample after compaction should be about 1 to 2 millimeters. If there is much more than that, your melting range may be broader than expected as it takes longer to melt the entire sample. Use the smallest amount that can be seen to melt. 
If you look closely, there are three slots in front of the thermometer compartment. Load the tube into one of these slots. Now we can turn the on-off switch to on and set the voltage control to 4. Observed melting point also depends on the rate of heating because some solids can decompose or bubble before actually melting. So, we know when the sample is actually melting when the first drop of liquid is visible. Note, the temperature shown is of the surrounding metal, not the sample. If you are heating too quickly, say at about 5 degrees per minute, you will have a broad temperature range even if the sample is pure. The melting range begins when the first crystal begins to melt and ends when the final crystal is a liquid. Turn the instrument and thermometer off. Remove your capillary tube and dispose of it in the proper glass waste container.